Hi there, Steve Brattel here again from ArtLearn Studio. Now, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that the more we practice anything in life, the better we get. Watercolour painting, of course, is no exception to that. So what I like to do is practice regularly. When I get up in the mornings, I'll open the curtains, and if the clouds are interesting, that's what I like to paint. So I get some offcuts of watercolour paper, just a couple of paints, switch the kettle on, and off I go. I don't want to put myself under too much pressure because I want to start the day with a positive mental attitude. So there's a couple of techniques that I use, which I'd like to show you right now. I'll not usually have an organized setup like this first thing in the morning. This is really just to give you an idea of how I start the creative process. I'll often just find what materials I've got close to hand and get going from there. The colors I'm using are Prussian Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Payne's Grey and Lemon Yellow. And I started off by putting in the sky around the clouds and now I'm using a darker mix using a bit of Payne's Grey uh, for the interior of the clouds. The brush I'm using is a Raphael Soft Aqua size 0 and as you can see a lot of the time I'm holding the brush at the end of a handle and that allows me to make flexible marks. I can then hold the brush closer to the tip for when I want to be more accurate. I'd now like to show you a technique called blotting off. That's where I've taken the brush and I've dried it off on a tissue and now I'm lifting off the paint so I get softer edges. These examples aren't speeded up, they're all painted pretty much in real time. I've just taken out a few frames when I'm dipping into the paint or taking more water. Notice how I keep moving the brush from left to right so I don't get hard edges within the wash. In watercolour painting, it's always a good idea to preserve the white of the paper as long as you can. So here I'm painting around the shape of the clouds and keeping that quite clean. As I'm going to put in some dark land right at the bottom, I'm going to take the wash all the way to the end of the paper. Now I'm using that blotting off technique again, where I've dried the brush on a piece of tissue paper, just to soften out some of those edges. So now to have some fun with some lively brush strokes to show the shadow areas underneath the clouds. I'm using a darker mix of Payne's Grey and Prussian Blue. And here I'm softening off some of the upper edges with some clear water. It's always a good idea to remember that clouds are three-dimensional objects, so I'm going to put a slight shadow on the left of each cloud, because the sun is coming from the top right. And now with a dry brush, I'm lifting off the paint to indicate the distant clouds. And now the darker hills underneath. Painting in the fields with lemon yellow and a touch of alizarin crimson. So in this example of a sunrise, I'm working from left to right. Again, I'm still keeping a wet edge at the end of the wash so that I don't get any hard edges. Now I'm softening the edge with clear water because I don't want this colour to mix into the next one that I'm going to apply. Back to the blue using horizontal strokes. And 
now with a darker mix of Prussian blue and Payne's gray, I'm just brushing in the dark land. And now with the same mix, I'm brushing in the silhouettes of the clouds with lively strokes, allowing them to blend into the lighter first wash. And then the same mix with less water for the darker shadows beneath. Then once again, dabbing off the higher, far distant clouds. So the background in this example starts with a thin wash of Payne's Grey with a touch of alizarin crimson and a thicker mix to put in those dark clouds. And taking out the lighter areas with that dabbing off technique again. And in goes the land with a thicker mix of Payne's Grey and Lemon Yellow with a touch of alizarin crimson at the end. Finishing off with the shadow areas beneath the clouds. Thanks for watching. Hope you feel inspired to do a little painting every day. You know it'll be worth it. Just like and subscribe to the Art Learn Studio channel and I'll see you again next time.